Hello and welcome to Checking the Vitals, a podcast powered by Specialty Care. I'm Todd Schlosser and joining me today are Aaron, Irene, and Owen, who are surgical neurophysiologists currently in the Interoperative Neuromonitoring New Hire program at Specialty Care. In this episode, we discuss how they each decided to enter the IONM field, what they were doing previously, and how they are handling the intensive training at Specialty Care. Enjoy the conversation. So Owen, Irene, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us here on Checking the Vitals. And I wanted to talk to you guys specifically because you guys are coming to your end of your last eight weeks, correct? That is correct. In the IONM sort of training process, and I realize it's like a year long, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about sort of your backgrounds and then why you chose to go into this as a field and then a little bit about what the training's like. So let's start with Owen, if it's okay if we start with you. Absolutely. What is your background in, um, before you came to IONM, what were you doing? So my background before was completely different than uh, most of other people. So uh, one, I was in the Marine Corps Okay. for four years. This was uh, public relations Marine. I uh, did a lot of like uh, PR, community relations type work with the Marine Corps. And then uh, I got out, went back to college, got my degree in business, actually. Okay. So I'm a business major. And then uh, one of my buddies who's going through the program right now, okay. uh, he told me about it. And I was like, dang, that's, that's pretty interesting, you know? Yeah. Like, we, I should look into this. And then next thing you know, I'm here. Yeah. You know? Awesome. And, and it's been fun. It's been a good time. And I'm really glad I did it. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you. Irene, what is your background in? So I am a chiropractor. Oh, wow. And okay. yeah, so I came the chiropractic route. Um, I have a colleague that currently works for specialty care um, who's also a chiropractor. And she and I had been talking about just some nervous system stuff and just kind of how our brains worked and all this fun stuff. And she's like, you might be interested in yeah. looking into this company. And I did. And here I am. <laughs> so you were, a, it appealed to you when you looked into For it. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So Aaron, what was your background? Yes, I came from an engineering background. So oh, wow. okay. I graduated both my bachelor's and my master's in biomedical engineering. Okay. I've taken multiple physiology classes and I've loved like learning about the muscles, the nervous system. I actually did some research regarding the neuromuscular junction. Oh, okay. So um, I found this job through um, my college board, like, job hunting and uh-huh. I was like this this sounds really cool and I remember learning about IONM in uh, some of the introductory classes that uh, we were taught I was like what can you do in the field of like biomedical engineering yeah I was like being in a hospital being a, in a clinician being able to use these different equipments that we've been talking about in class um, I think it's a perfect fit for me and I'm here I, I love what I'm doing for these past eight weeks awesome well we're gonna get into that some too mm-hmm. let me ask you guys so if you started a little under eight weeks ago at this point you started someone sometime in February, maybe yes. late January? Okay, so when was the first time you heard about IONM before you started in February? When did you first hear about IONM as a job? A year before, like six months before probably. Okay, so yeah. pretty recent, yeah, is that? Pretty, pretty recent, recent like uh, probably never. right before I applied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually very, that's one of the reasons I bring it up because a lot of people are in that same boat. And, and I talk to a lot of um, people who are perfusionists now, and I'll ask them that sim- same question. You know, when did they learn about perfusion? And they're like, uh, six months before I went to perfusion school, you know? And it's a similar for neurophysiologists, it seems. It's like every job that happens in an OR, that's not the surgeon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No yeah. One knows what Nobody those knows. Do, but those yep. people are highly skilled mm-hmm. and, you know, they have to go through training yep. mm-hmm. or maybe even extra learning to, to do that job. It's interesting that no one really knows what they do. I think it's because they're sort of the background characters in Grey's Anatomy that like no one really gets like a name or yeah, yeah. they're they're a featured extra. You don't really get like a love getting that cameo like in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let me ask this. So you start in February. Mm-hmm. What has the training program been like? I was talking to a couple of uh, my coworkers who mm-hmm. are in, who actually went through the program here in Nashville, okay. and we compare it as like I had to do the two week didactic learning program. And then while they had eight weeks in a classroom here. Yeah. So we had the two week didactic program as well as um, every week after that, we've only had like one, we call it Web Wednesdays where we're, where we're still doing that didactic learning. Right. But we're getting that hands on experience in the OR earlier than what they said that they've done um, here in Nashville. Previously. Yes. Yeah. Before sort of COVID pushed everyone mm-hmm. remote. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. Okay. So you guys uh, have only been with us. A little under eight weeks, and you've already been in the OR. A oh good yeah, that's, yes, yes. yes. Uh, very well versed. Yeah, in the OR by, by now, and I think that's helpful. Like you know, getting in there, getting hands on with the equipment and stuff. You know, preceptors are all very knowledgeable people. You know, 
So I feel like we're getting pretty good training. Yeah. And the preceptor is there, I'd imagine, on your first day in the OR. Oh, yeah. They're doing everything. And oh, we're yes. Just watching yeah. them do yeah. it. Yes and no. Like, okay. I jumped in, like, <laughs> right away, which I wasn't expecting. But my preceptor is like, we're going to be hands-on. So I basically mirrored her for everything. Oh, that's um, awesome. Like, you know, we, we took our time, of course, because it was my first day. Sure. But um, I did appreciate being able to just get right in right away, um, which, again, was not what I was expecting. Yeah, facilitates yeah. learning, you know. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. yeah. I'm a hands-on learner myself, so I understand how doing that, as many touches as you can get mm -hmm. on. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some stuff that it's like, mm, not yet. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> and being a hands-on learner, like I, I'm, I like learning through like visuals and reading and stuff like yeah. that. So p putting those two connections together kind of made this like light bulb in my head. That is a very good point, and it makes me want to ask this next question. So you're learning all this in the OR. Are you taking time to sort of debrief the cases that you're doing in the OR? And what is that, pro is, it, is it with your cohort? Or is it with your preceptor that you're sort of talking about the cases? Or maybe it's both. both. Yeah, 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 it's, it is, both. it's both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you know, it's with the preceptor at, at the end of the case or whatever, when, you know, we we'll sit down and it's like, okay, this, this, and this happened. Uh, why did it happen? You know, kind of just, just going over the basics. Sure. Also, again, very helpful, you know, because it kind of, like, once you've done it, you've had time to kind of digest it. Yeah. And then you go back and talk about it. Like, it just uh, just keeps reiterating that those points that you need to, you know, really emphasize on. So, I mean, it's super helpful. Yeah. But then we come together during our Web Wednesdays, and we have to do case presentations. Oh, okay. So then we really dig into, okay, here's what, you know, my case was. Here's what went really well. Here's what we could have worked on. And then with our instructor, Julie, then she's like, here's some tips and tricks that could have maybe enhanced whatever. Yeah, and I feel like that's really important because coming from like different backgrounds, we all have different inputs and different methods to come to the same conclusion. Yeah. So there's no wrong way to do something. Yeah. It's creating the best way for you and uh, the best personal way to make everything monitorable, efficient, yeah. and um, the best results that we could Get for the patient. So I'd imagine that you guys are in your home cities most of the time. You know, you're in Nashville today, but and this whole week? This whole week. This whole okay. Week. But normally you're in your home cities and you're sort of yep. in our market. Yep. Are you in yeah. your teams already? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we found out our market when whenever we got hired. Okay. So we had to fly out to our market, then start didactic learning, and then join the OR team. Okay. So you're already sort of embedded with your oh, yeah. like clinical yep. manager and that and that team. Yep. So I'd imagine your preceptors on that team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. So you're really starting to integrate with the team that you'll be working with day to day, even when you pass the C name. Yep. Yeah. 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 So which I realize is months away at this point. Yes. But um, so at this point, eight weeks in, um, you're about to finish your classroom training. Is that typically how that goes? The the meat of it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll still have check-ins along the way until yeah, we're about we to get roll certified. Into phase two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, phase two. So phase two is less classroom training, but it's a lot of OR. Yeah. OR just yeah. getting um, getting our competency so we could be on cases on our own. Okay. Yeah, because right now all of our cases are with our preceptor. Okay. But the goal, of course, is to be able to do them on our Step. monitor on mm -hmm. our own. Yeah. So does that getting to monitoring on your own, does that happen in that second phase? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And the second phase lasts about how uh, long? May 14th, if I remember correctly, that's the end, that's the last midterm date that we have. Okay. And then after that, uh, we should be able to earn our clinical competencies in different types of cases soon thereafter. And correct me if I'm wrong, because clearly you guys will know better than me, earning your, I guess, Competencies, competencies. Mm -hmm. means that for a specific type of surgery, you're authorized to solo that yes. monitor. Yep. Yes. Right. Okay. But mm -hmm. solo, you know, there's always still somebody watching. Like, yeah. you know, we're still obviously working with mm -hmm. a remote neurophysiologist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're, you know, an MD. Then we also have our clinical managers and I own them clinical support. So we also have people that are still mm -hmm. there, which I really appreciate knowing that, yeah, you're on your own, but you're not yeah, on your you're own. You're on, but you're not on. Yeah, you're, there's a safety net there. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. The, a lifeline. Yeah, there's people that keep <laughs> yeah. you in check too. So yeah. just in case you don't see something they do, they have it's just another set of eyes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've talked to people in your position a lot. And some people who have like just passed CNMs, sometimes we'll check back in with them. and. I, uh, they'll often share stories that like, it was eight o'clock at night and I had no idea who to reach out to. So I text Julie and Julie told me how to troubleshoot X, Y, Z, right. that sort of thing. So there's always that sort of safety net there. And you mentioned, uh, Irene, the remote 
uh, neurophysiologists who mm -hmm. sort of monitor cases, you know, while you're monitoring the case. So you have like a backup mm -hmm. for what you're doing in the actual room, which I find very important. Very yes. important. Yes. Yes. Especially yes. early on. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. So you have some various different backgrounds. Um, how challenging did you find what you learned in sort of the didactic classroom training? How difficult was it to grasp? Um, for me, uh, there was a section regarding like amplifiers and polarity. Coming from an engineering background, that was basically a lot. Like we were drilled, yeah. nail, hammer to the nail regarding that. But some of the um, some of the more advanced ana anatomy, especially the anesthesia, I've never really looked at. Yeah. So coming from that, I knew I had to, there. There was stuff that I needed to improve on in order to have a successful like just to know to communicate with the surgeon and the anesthesiologist about. But I'd imagine there was quite a bit of overlap in the biomedical engineering yes. and sort of what you're doing. Here. Yes, like a lot of the physiological stuff yeah. um, that I learned was overlapping, but the like the anesthetics, like memorizing the anesthetics, memorizing different types of bones or muscles that I haven't really worked with before. Yeah. Um, that was that was the challenge, most challenging part for me. Now say when you see bones and muscles that you haven't worked with before, I'm thinking Irene who is <laughs> coming from a world of bones and muscles. So it seems like the Venn diagram of what you already knew, Aaron, and the Venn diagram of what you already knew, Irene, sort of made the circle complete, but you all knew different things. Exactly, different. exactly. So was it a similar experience, just different what you already sort of knew? Yeah, I mean, the, the anatomy, the anesthesia stuff, all of that came so much more naturally to me. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, some of the, the like equipment, the electronics, I wouldn't say that it was necessarily difficult, but it just was a little more foreign to me than anatomy, which has been my bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and in my case, with no like medical experience <laughs> at all, it hasn't been too challenging. For, I mean, there's a lot of information you have to process. Yeah. But uh, that just, you know, comes with uh, putting your nose to the grindstone and getting yeah. after it, you know? Look, pay attention to class, uh, do the assigned readings, your homework, all that good stuff. Like, It'll come to you, and yeah. especially like being in the OR, you're able to kind of transfer what you learned to the OR and then use what you learned in OR to what you've learned, you yeah. know, to kind of make that loop complete. For anybody that's interested in, in like uh, neuromonitoring, like it's doable. Yeah. It's not, it's not impossible. Like, it's if, really if cool I can to do put it, it all together. If I can do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> One thing I really like about this program too is that we do have the, um, we do have both parts, right? We have yeah. the clinical, but we're also in class. And I mean, class is, is intense. Like there's a lot that we're doing, but like Owen was saying, like you put it all together and it really does form that link. I have a, a coworker on my team who didn't come this route. Um, she just got hired on as an experienced new hire. And she looks at me studying my little note cards and stuff. And she's like, <laughs> I'm so jealous right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, because like, even when I'm talking with my preceptor, she'll like listen to like what we're talking about. And she's like, at your point, like when I was in your shoes, I did not know half of what you know, but I attribute that to this training program. Yeah, yeah being in like this training program, it's so intimate. Like we get, I feel like it's personal, like one-on-one -on -one learning, but we're, nine or yeah we're nine people in the cohort yeah. and we learn a lot and julie's a uh, fantastic instructor and she makes sure that we all the ideas and all the concepts that she makes sure that we need to know it gets hammered it just gets keep getting reiterated so as you mentioned before there are nine other people that you're learning with how well do you get to know your other class members well online obviously makes it extremely difficult mm -hmm. yeah because and you know, I mean, we're in the OR, and when we're not in the OR, you're, you know, studying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we we made a Facebook group. Uh, like, oh, awesome. Yeah, Facebook group, group uh, text. But, like, being in Nashville uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. getting that face-to-face -face really uh, helped propagate relationships. I've been pleasantly surprised because, yeah, I mean, the online experience, like, it was great for learning, but as far as like interacting with each other, um, again, Julie tried to make it as interactive as possible. Like with Zoom, there's a feature where you can go into little breakout groups, yeah, we'll break which <laughs> did help because I did get to meet or like work, you know, with this smaller group in a little bit more intimately. Yeah. So that did help, but 
it really wasn't until we got here that it's like, oh yeah, you're really cool. Like I like you, right? Um, but again, it was it was so natural too. I think we all just kind of like we're we're a community and everybody is going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, so to be able to come in and just like even share some of our stories. Yeah. Have, yeah. Like, yeah. Got very common problems. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then coming coming in here like yesterday, we had breakout sessions where uh, people who work with E4 equipment, people who work with Cadwell equipment, uh, we just had a time to learn from, uh, let's say, a different procedure from that someone else has done and find out different ways that we could improve ourselves as well as become more efficient and faster uh, prepping and getting our signals before incision just to inform the surgeon and anesthesiologist whatever they need to know before, before they start. So while you guys are, I'd imagine, in class or even online mm -hmm. and you're talking about your cases, are you guys sort of like, oh, yeah, that's happened to me? Like, oh, I, yeah. 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 But really, it's more so like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad it's not just me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're like, I feel <laughs> like in, in, yeah. in that yeah. little box, it's so, it's so hard to, I guess, make an exaggerated point yeah. because we're like people just see the small box. But yeah. here, everyone can see just like our tone of our voice, the muscle movements that we do, yeah. like, <sighs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I know. So I watched the the Checking the Vitals podcast when I was applying for this job, oh, and it was it actually was really helpful because I wanted oh, yeah? to I wanted to get an idea. Again, I had my colleague who you know works for specialty care, so she gave me one idea, but I wanted to just get more people's voices on what the process was like. Yeah. Um, and so I think what I got out of it was one, the people with different backgrounds, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And just the fact that you really could learn everything that you needed. Because again, I hadn't ever heard of this field yeah. prior to applying for specialty care. So it was cool to just know that you could learn as you go. Like you could work and learn mm -hmm. all in one sw fell swoop and then be prepared to get certified. So. First off, thank you for listening. I appreciate that. <laughs> but um, I think that's one of the reasons we focus on interviewing just everybody. Like we interview mm -hmm. surgeons and we interview, you know, yeah. people who are in your position, people who have just passed c mm -hmm. It's not just IONM focused. It's right. also, you know, the perfusion cardiac side. and yeah. perfusion and all of that stuff. But we do that so uh, potential employees or clients mm -hmm. or, I mean, we have a lot of listeners that are just in the healthcare field and generally want to hear a lot of these conversations. Right. So. I'm glad that you got yeah. some benefit out of it. Yeah, for, but yeah, yeah, I love that specialty care has this um, yeah. and just, right, again, creates that space for learning for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would do this job with any other company. Oh, yeah. Because just because of the training program. Like, yeah. yeah. Training oh, yeah. Program having really talked to helps. some of my colleagues in my market, they who have maybe come from other companies. Right. They're all like, yeah, the training you're getting is so, so far superior to what they received. Yeah. I do know uh, just from talking to a lot of surgeons and stuff that use our services, that's normally how I get in with them. They already use our INM services and I, and I sort of knock on their door virtually and say, hey, can I bug you for 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of them say one of the reasons they go with us is because of our training program. Mm -hmm. They trust our INM people more than just I don't. I honestly couldn't even name another company because I don't know. But yeah. then another company out there, mm -hmm. which I think is a huge compliment to what you guys are doing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and especially like I, rem I remember seeing that the training program is like nationally accredited by the ABRET, the board association. Yeah. So that's really it was really great that you're yeah. learning stuff that will help prepare you for yeah. taking for taking and passing the board exam and then preparing you for the future as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I know that the the Julie's pass rate for the CNIMS mm -hmm. uh, is very, very high. I it's can't fair. quote it, but I, yeah. I know yeah. it's very, very high. And I know it, being in her class, knowing that you have this big board exam coming up in a, a few months, mm -hmm. it's good to know that you're getting the, the best training you can yeah. to be able to pass that the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Owen, Irene, Aaron, thank you guys so much for joining us here on Checking the Vitals. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank for you very much. Us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was fun. It was a lot of fun.